Welcome to another Fireside Chat. Today, we are going to speak about gratitude, which we tried to last time, but it went somewhere else. So, Linda, you did mention a TED Talk or something that you heard. Well, it's actually a lady who is um, speaking. It's a program on uh, Netflix. Her name's Brene Brown, I believe, and she has done TED Talks previously. But I was listening to her conversation and uh, – she mentioned uh, gratitude and how people that are grateful for, the, for things in life generally don't get too hung up on certain issues. But then she was saying that if you take something away that people are grateful for, then you have essentially stolen that gratitude. And I thought that was a very shallow way of looking at it. It was a very materialistic thing, uh, way to look at gratitude. To me, gratitude is so much bigger than a thing that can be taken away from you. Absolutely. If it's conditional, then it's not real gratitude anyway at all. Mm. It's like I'll, I'll offer gratitude and be thankful for this period as long as these certain things are met. And, and the only – Sorry, I was just going to say, even if you have your gratitude, have gratitude for something, and someone does something stupid, or, or they they don't respect, or they get so, let's say you're thankful for something, a loved one, and then they might react and trigger about something, or you have a disagreement or an argument, you're not going to be ungrateful. You're still grateful for that experience or that circumstance, or whatever it is, you, you or that opportunity in sharing, or that connection, or whatever that is, and that's not conditional on. You have to always respect me, and you can never be. Um, we can never have a disagreement because I'll take my gratitude back. Yeah, and it's like you owe me. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's it's everything's in on its merits in a, in every moment, ultimately. And the gratitude, really, it's about uh, gaining something. Uh, it can be obviously given given something materialistically, but Gratitude is really, and I, this is my sense of gratitude, it's triggering something deep within myself, a deep appreciation for myself and others and and mm. for an experience. Yep. And that can never be taken away. Yeah. But it's far deeper. It's far more profound. If, if someone goes against the, or doesn't facilitate that experience any longer, mm. it's for me to understand and realize how to, how to facilitate an experience or the environment that suits me, it's up to me to do that. And you can be grateful for someone at times. But, yeah, it, it's not a – I don't like the word Indian giver because it's the cowboys that took away, not the Indians. Mm -hmm. Cowboy giver. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got an issue with all cowboys. It's just the governments. <laughs> it's the government took away. Yeah. yeah, so definitely there's a complete misunderstanding and a, a lack of depth without a doubt. And I think based on – how people feel in general and mm. assessing a group of people. And yeah. I would say these people are grateful for what that because of what they're getting and it's, it is conditional. There's no doubt about that. So these are people that are more so disempowered. They're not spiritually minded in a sense, or if they are, they haven't come to terms with, with certain aspects of spirituality within themselves. Yeah. Otherwise this would not apply. So I think any, assessments or evaluations is only as good as the subjects mm -hmm. and like everything we speak about is getting out of the general consensus it's not what we talk about is not the views of the masses at all it's, mm -hmm. it's the view of the minority that are seeking understanding and yeah. a deep sense of fulfillment joy happiness mm -hmm. and a lot, a lot of the, obviously everyone's seeking that to, on some level but the masses are seeking that through more material things. And I think when it comes to materialistic aspects, then, yeah, it applies. Mm. No. I was just thinking, to me, it feels like it's more of a state of being rather than a fleeting emotion. You know? But in that, where what they're talking about, the only way it can apply in what they're saying is it's – very dependent. You're, you're not – this isn't from an empowered person point of view. It's from, all, from no. a big point. Mm -hmm. So it is 100% everything you talk about is the state of being. Yeah, so talking about the tendencies, but I feel if if you if someone talks about the results of that experiment, so to speak, mm -hmm. then you must offer insight into 
complex meanings. I, I don't know if she did they she actually talk about anything further than that, or that was her conclusion. Uh, that was <clears throat> that was her conclusion at the end because um, I think uh, she was doing some sort of experiment. I can't remember exactly how it started off, but um, they, they basically found that people that weren't having these issues that she was looking at prior were the ones that were grateful, that they had a sense of gratitude. But then her fears kicked in, I think, and, and she, she's quite fearful because um, she, and she can't just – relax and, and trust because, again, someone can take something away from her. So she's not, like you said, she's not empowering herself. She's giving that power away to someone else. This is the woman that did the assessment, is this person that you're talking about just then? Yeah. So she's a oh. scientist. She's an academic. Which is, which is interesting. So it goes to show one thing that we've said, I've said often is there's a huge difference potentially between wisdom and intelligence. And they can be linked, but not necessarily they can be worlds apart. So yeah. it's amazing how on a, on a, it appears, well, whether it was on purpose or not, that she did an experiment to justify her views and her understanding and, and fears. Yeah. So she's cementing herself into a place by rationalizing against certain people by doing a, a test with the people, I guess, that resonate with her or that mm-hmm. she resonates with. Yeah. So the, the test was doomed to fail, but. The, the amazing thing is that uh, she's doing what most people do unwittingly. They will justify their suffering and they'll find reasons and ways to enforce their suffering, their fears. Mm. So she just did it on a, on a huge scale, what most people do individually that are suffering, Yeah. Which, which leads to more suffering. So she's basically saying that there's no way out and it's all shallow and immaterial, which is obviously it appears um, at that point that she did the – this experiment or study that this is where she, how she was feeling, where she was within herself. Mm. Which is pretty sad. It is sad because I think it was a general, like if, if you look at yeah, her conclusion where that, that the people that weren't, didn't have this certain misery or, that she was looking at were the ones that were grateful. But then she had to, instead of leaving at that or, or delving more into it, she had to find fault with that. Yeah. So she sort of she was delving deeper into it, but in the wrong direction completely. We're all losers, and she did that to justify her own suffering. Yeah, it was out of fear, generally. Is yeah. Yeah, very sad. Yeah. So there, there's no way. This is the issue, and I think this is the issue with um, so many people. There's no way forward. We do the best we can. There's no deep way. There's no breaking free from misery and suffering. It's all fleeting, and it is all fleeting to a degree, but the underlying essence is we can be joyful, we can be happy, because what she's missing or not revealing is that to suffer, we must constantly remind ourselves and entertain that suffering. And this is what she's doing on a big scale for the sake of this yeah. assessment. I remember the first one of the first books I read, I was recommended, well, The Celestine Prophecy was the first one, Mm-hmm. And this about the, which talks about the synchronicities of things, and the other one after that was Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman, pretty sure. And it messed me around, messed up my head because it's talking about perfection can never be reached, and everything's perfectly balanced, and, and balance is balancing all the time. The a mantra for this Om Puna Mandaha Puna Madam Punat Puna Badachate Punasha Puna Madaya Punami Vava Shishate. That means this is perfect, that is perfect. From the perfect springs the perfect, take the perfect from the perfect, and only the perfect remains. Mm. I love this from India. I learned this absolutely profound. Yeah, and in that, there's a surrendering, you don't have to hold anything together in this aspect. And with the other, the other view, and one read the Way of the Peaceful Warrior, he messed me around because I like to believe, and I, I guess subtly, that perfection could be reached. And playing the sport, I like to think that, you know, you had the ultimate way. There's a way through, and the the way is the, the ultimately, if you're on the football field or soccer field or whatever it is, is the direction you commit to ultimately, and you can make it the best way, and and you can learn and and enhance your skills. It's all comes down to awareness and experience. Mm. But the reason this book messed with my head is because 
Now this guy's was a had a mentor master that would always challenge and push him. And even if and so this guy was an athlete and I think he did the rings or something in gymnastics and he'd do amazing performances and the guy thought he'd he'd done a great performance and, and then he talked to his mentor and going, Oh, how was that? And he said, Oh, the way you unwrapped this is my memory. It may not be exactly how it is. This is how I'm, uh, this, I remember reading this when I first came to Perth. This was in '94, yeah. and I've only read this book once. But I remember it, really, it stuck in my head. So I remember that he said, "Oh, when you unwrapped the tape from your hands, you you could have unwrapped it better. It was a bit scrappy, you know. It wasn't mm-hmm. you didn't unwrap unwrap it perfectly." And I, I'm thinking, "Wow, oh, like I'm saying, <laughs> they, they, they can't be like that." Mm. And I, I had a, uh, I spoke to a very, very deep uh, man a, a, um, that had great insight, and he said it's mind stuff. And I, I realised, um, I realised when he said it, but it is mind stuff. It's like that perfection can never be attained. Mm. But in in that, it's very hard to surrender because you you feel like you've got to always be striving for perfection. And I don't believe that's it's like that at all. And that's no way to live. In my no. experience, it's about letting go and understanding that. With right intent and surrender, and following your intuition, perfection is happening around us, and there's still challenges. But it's like I don't have to hold the universe together; it knows exactly what to do. This taps into the last conversation in the other the previous video. Yeah. There is nothing to hold together. There's nothing to hold together whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And the idea that um, nothing, everything's random, and things aren't perfect. You take too much authority or responsibility upon yourself to hold and balance everything yourself mm-hmm. in where you, how you carry yourself. or And it's like you, you know, with a lot of stressing parents and they stress over their children, it's like you, they walk around tense and they feel that they have to because that's holding everything together. Mm-hmm. You can be completely relaxed or tense. There, there's no real difference outside of yourself. There's, sort, there's a lot of big difference inside. But what happens if you carry that burden around, you're promoting stress or projecting stress on onto other people, so whether you're saying anything or not, because we're all in tune and we all feel those around us that we're connected to. So if, if I'm harboring stress levels or any any sense of tension, those around me are going to feel it. So it's going to have an impact. People, most people put pressure on themselves, too much pressure. So then subtly they're feeling it from all around them. Yep. So it comes in a mindfulness of, not projecting tension or pressure on or outwardly for anyone. Mind stuff is a distraction from heart. That's how mm-hmm. I see it. It's entertaining the mind, distracting the mind, mesmerizing the mind. And that to me, all these things are a distraction from heart. An experiment or test should give certain understandings or, you know, you can um, give tendencies or evaluations of circumstances, but ultimately we should always, I really feel we should always offer a sense of hope and there's another way. And if, if a test leads to, there is no outcome, there's no solution, there's no possibility, then what's the point of the test? <laughs> exactly. No, it, it binds you to inadequacies, not being enough. And I don't agree with that at all. And I think these are the entrapments of, of certain people and, where, as we, we mentioned with this woman, I feel it just she's entrapping and casing herself and therefore impacting the others the same. And I, I certainly don't agree with that at all. It's a good thing to mention that bring up, though, because it's, it's worth noting, worth talking about. You know, if we don't have to believe the, these, you know, we've got to look at the conditions like illnesses, viruses, COVID, the whole lot. You have to get all the information. Mm-hmm. You, we, we can't fear or see things through rose-colored glasses or negativity, fear, anything like that. We have to see things, get the balance of everything and be willing to change our views mm. and, and at least be open to the possibility that things aren't what we think or feel. So, And to do that, we must definitely come to peace and not be too encased in, uh, in fear because fear is a – fear blindfolds. It, it stops our capacity to reason, absolutely minimizes that aspect. The fear is very distorting, I think. 100%. 100% well, it's, it's not just fear. It's 
any projection we have, whether it's fear, anger, anxiety, mm. or frustration, it all distorts. So if, if something brings rise to tension within the body where you're holding on, any tension you can feel, it's like a knot in your, in your solar plexus and it's holding on. You have to, it's opposite to understand you must be prepared to let go. If you're holding on, which is, which is a natural um, emotional response when we're not coping or we're fearing anyway, but when people argue, they're defending their view and it's amazing that two people will defend their view and both views create suffering. Mm-hmm. So ultimately one is just saying, this is how I'm feeling and I want to be heard and understood. And if, if I can listen and understand someone that's speaking to me first, then I can, I can, instead of yelling at them or competing with them, you, know, you can, you can challenge a new way or a new sense of freedom through experience and understanding yep. rather than uh, ramming my viewpoint home. And if my viewpoint is also suffering, what's the point in having either, either viewpoint whatsoever? Mm-hmm. So both people, if both people are suffering often, and that both people are justifying their view, neither are right. Mm-hmm. Because you look at anyone that's that's really clear, and these, these are people that, that are generally, not to say everyone can have reactions at different times, but if the great teachers uh, have a sense of joy and peacefulness, they, they don't, they're not reactive. They're far more understanding. They're the ones that can teach and offer insight. Because they can understand many points of view, and that that is the key thing. When you're suffering or lost within yourself, your point of view is very minimised, and yep. limit therefore minimised, restricted, all those things. You know, they're all the same. So, and this whole point on gratitude is that such a small version of it, and a shallow version of it, and that is clear because there's no way through, there's no way forward. Mm. So, it's all about, as we mentioned before, the only thing. We, we can say is we are experiencing our us as beings are experiencing everything's moving and it's all energetic there's nothing solid in the universe so arguing this how solid things are is pointless like everything has different densities by taking by looking at the material aspect we're not looking in the right way we have to look at the experience of things mm-hmm. and if our spirit experience well, if our experiences aren't bringing joy, peace, fulfillment, happiness, we there are things we are missing. There are things we are lacking. There are things we are not seeing. So that's really clear. But we have to ultimately come to terms and appreciate the insight that the experience has given us. That's that's true gratitude. It's appreciating the experience, and no one can take that away. And with any true experience. There's a letting go, there's a sense of fulfillment, a sense of something more, or of peace. Or, and uh, even if even if someone gave us a car for a day and they took it away, it's like, well, I got to experience a, a car for a day, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the, the, the person that's giving too, that's another thing that if the person gives, says, okay, I'll give you this, but you must use it in this way. Mm. You know, a contract's drawn up or something, or, or like a, a contract isn't, isn't even agreed between two people. It might be an expectation that's held on to, that's yeah. not expressed. And then you, you offer it, you give them something and they go and blow it all on hats or something, you know, or, yeah. or blow whatever they spend money on. And go, oh, it wasn't, I should have used it in this area. But okay, well, you should have said ultimately, I'll, I'd like to pay for this to help you in this area. Um, can, will you let me, you know? And they go, no, no, I'd rather spend it on this and that. And go, well, I'm not going to give you the money. So yeah. it, it comes down to clear communication. But yeah, um, I think it, it, the spot she's talking about, the position she's in, is talking from a victimhood position. Yeah. And, and there's a, a potential trap that when you offer someone something that they can become a, almost uh, used to or addicted to being offered something. And it's not a one-off. Let, let's say you're you know, if someone was destitute near your home and you didn't invite them in the house, but you, you took them food every day because they couldn't move and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll say they'll stuck somewhere. After a few days, they start abusing you if you didn't bring them food or if you gave, gave them really nice food for a week and then you started giving them rubbish food, they'll start getting abusive because the food's not what it was. When in actual mm-hmm. fact, every meal is a bonus or something special. That's right. So it, it's the conditioning behind potential giving that, uh, People and but that's coming from a person that feels like oh, I can't do it. You should do it. I'm used to it from you, so you should continue to give to me. Yeah. 
So there's no there's no real contracts or expectations. No one has to do for anyone. They do it because they want to. And so someone might give to someone based on an idea of this person. And then sometimes they might even give something or take it back because it's not the what they the person's not what they thought they were or not who they thought they were. But that was based on your own idea of that person and your own feelings within yourself and potentially projecting an idea or seeing potentially someone when they're open and when they're loving. But mm. you don't know what's you know, the other person might be triggered or might have some circumstance within the family or might feel desperate or might feel alone or might feel, um, you know, people comfort, eat, they comfort by, they, they do all sorts of things when they're not feeling good within themselves. So there's yeah. so many factors here. And none of that's factored into in coming up with the conclusions that this lady did. None of them. It's just shallow. Yep. So this is everything that opposite to what we're, we're all about with our chats. Completely. Because it's such yeah. a shame because turning around for the good, it's such a powerful state of being. If you 100%. can get away from that yeah. narrow viewpoint well two things go hand in hand and that gratitude and surrender mm. gratitude is being thankful without like ultimately true gratitude is being thankful without conditions yeah and having no conditions and obviously there's integrity but having no conditions and being thankful and letting go is, has everything to do with surrender as well so they are absolutely two key aspects that we must focus on and work towards at all times, as much as possible, because the, most people, or many, many people, especially during these tough times where the isolation and everything, people tend to hold on to as much as they possibly can. Yeah. Uh, and that's in that space, gratitude is hard, and surrender is extremely hard, because uh, you know it's like the un- understanding is, or the feeling is that nothing's fair; it's not fair. Yeah. But we, we must create that that comfort and peace within. And that changes the, our attitude between work automatically. If you start working on nurturing yourself, our idea of things aren't fair to get in touch with how you're feeling and unraveling and starting to see through things, you realize that um, the energy does follow thought and heart. So the fairness starts changing and the idea to what f- being fair is changes. And the only thing you need to change is your idea of yourself and how – and start discovering and valuing yourself so therefore you can start discovering how amazing you are Mm. yeah i'm absolutely as it's very clear against that sort of study where there's no way forward there's no way to go yeah i didn't i didn't hear the the chat but based on what you're saying so definitely just validating her her feelings of inadequacies yeah, which well, she, did, she didn't that. mention it was due from – it stemmed from her fears. She didn't mention okay. – yeah. Yep. I think that's key then. At least, at least she put that in there. Yeah. No. But she didn't I, put enough emphasis on it for, for many people to catch, I think. Um, well, I don't, don't think many people would catch it at all because um, – and a lot of people are fearing, so they're going to fall into the same trap and they're going to feel yeah. what she's saying is validated. So yeah. that gives insight to – that's almost saying, well, this is based – the experiment is based on this, but that people don't understand necessarily the mis- the ramifications of that. Mm-hmm. So, but it's clear by the end of her study, she's validated all those fears. Yeah, she hasn't worked hasn't worked through or sent through any of them. No. So, so that can give insight for people, you know, if, if they're aware. But, um, but the the entrapment is if you watch the, you will listen to the whole thing, it'll either great against you and I'd imagine that almost everyone that listens to it would it'd great against them wouldn't sit with them mm-hmm. but it'd potentially uh, draw them into that fear more so mm-hmm. and misunderstanding so yeah. that's that's the concern without yes. a doubt definitely so we have to we have to surrender we have to learn to be have gratitude for the experiences that we're and the insights so it's really hard though like I understand if we don't feel like we're that life's supporting us at times, it's it's easy to say, oh, you know, change your attitude and learn to discover and unravel, and, and we must anyway. But it's so hard, so hard when like, where do you go? It's, it's just so many people are suffering and struggling, 
and it's so easy to get drawn into this sort of stuff. And yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, you know, I don't like the the whole the limited aspect of what she was saying, but I can definitely understand the conclusion she can come up with, and I can see how she can easily justify it. But it's a dangerous thing. Yeah. To, Right things. There's no doubt about that. You know, so, but I think um, it's hard to to be grateful when you are in a state of suffering. But I think after the suffering, or after when you you know after a bit of time afterwards, I think I, I well I have personally always been grateful for what I have been through. I think because I am who I am because of that. Yeah. Well, I think I said that too. I said that for years. I said that in my twenties. Understood. I'm not. I'm not minimising what you're saying, but from my experience, and many say, "Yeah, no, I'm really happy for what I know, what I understand." And then, but I was saying that when I was still impacted by turmoil around me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm, you know, because anal- like analytically, I understood it. Yeah. But I didn't understand it deeply within my myself. I'm seeking, but really, it's the it takes that from what I've seen that experience. That pushes you. That drives you forward. Yeah. But that that makes one seek more, seek understanding, because you you can only take so much suffering, and you go, no, it's just I need to find a way. Mm-hmm. You know, that happened to myself. It's happened to many. It happened to my my son. You no, know, it's, it's um the suffering within himself. He he was in a place where he would, you know, like many, was believing it was him. It's because of him. And the interesting thing is, I, I wouldn't. No, I never allowed him to blame anyone else I'd yeah. offer, offer understanding when he was going through suffering, as a lot of kids do. Like children blame themselves. And adults, almost everyone blame themselves for their suffering and others around them. Yeah. And the interesting thing is uh, if I didn't I didn't blame anyone else either. I said you can't you can't blame yourself for everything that's going on in a way. Yeah. And you can't blame others either. Yeah, and that always does the conundrum. How does that make sense? Well, because you have to understand how other people are feeling around you. It's that suffering and that misunderstanding and that no way out inspired him to try and find a way. And this is the key thing. So this mm-hmm. is the, the only positive thing about the study that she did is people might fall into the feeling of being lost and being a victim in a sense, but ultimately it may spur a hunger within them that it can't be the way. Because I, I really feel if you you pulled in two directions with this sort of thing. If you're pulling the victim space, you want to sort of subconsciously try and, or sort of more conscious than subconscious, try and validate that victim space. It's hard mm. to get out of, but within themselves, on some level, he wouldn't be sitting with them because mm. it's like you don't you don't want it to be that way. Yeah. I never wanted it to be that way, and that that brings about the hunger because if you, it's like you starve yourself, you starve yourself from what it actually needs because you're believing something that's false within. Yeah. So the greatest thing from having limited ways through or no way through is it can be extremely confronting. I think that's that's the the best thing of, of this sort of uh, what she was talking about. I feel. So the the bottom line is we must have gratitude for the things that come our way unconditionally, and therefore if we have conditions on our on what comes our way and certain things for. For, to, for us to have gratitude, then we have conditions on those around us, and that therefore that's a tough place to live because even within that, it's a volatile place because it's dependent on our surrounding. So it's linked with the more we try and control our environment, then the more suffering we endure, the more suffering we experience. That's just how it is. So this is the entrapment of of uh, shallow gratitude. It really comes down to everything lining up, and maybe that's what she's talking about you know, with, with certain people that are suffering. That where you're, they're controlling everything. I think that everything that they're feeling and experiencing is external. Yeah. So, and I think on this level, it makes sense what she's saying for those that do control their environment, thinking that everything external um, fully impacts their happiness and their joy, and it's based yeah. on external um, stimulation, mm-hmm. where. Yep. The majority of people do try and control their environment to for their sense of fulfillment and happiness. The vast majority of people do. As soon as you start realizing, and this is back on what I was teaching my son, is how to be responsible 
within yourself for your own thoughts, feelings, actions, 100% responsible. It's a process. And you're still unraveling, discovering. As soon as you start realizing that, then gratitude changes. It goes to a new level. Yeah. It's because I'm all of a sudden not dependent on outside circumstances. They impact me to some degree because I'm living in this world. Things don't happen despite me. They happen around me because of where everyone else is within themselves. And mm-hmm. and no one's ultimately trying to hurt me, even those that may project things on me or that may not understand me. It, it's all a matter of trying to balance themselves out or justify and or trying to unravel the mysteries within of why they're suffering. And often people go in the wrong direction. It's outward, outward, outward. Mm. Uh, Sorry. That's what, I was just thinking that's where a lot of people look for security. The, the sense of security seems to be based on the materialistic. If they have enough money, if they have the good job, if they have the family security, if they, you know, they have a husband, a relationship, whatever, that's what security is. And once they have that security, they feel safe. But, that again, that can be taken away. So if you're not secure in yourself, then – yeah, the materialistic is going to be affecting you greatly. 100%. Well, this is the thing. We're, we're just looking at, and that's where controlling the environment, if you're looking at the external factors, she's bang on pretty much. You know, it's yeah. when you're, you have a deeper connection within yourself, the, you can transition the, the external factors into a deeper meaning and you can appreciate the experiences more. But when we're governed, for those that are governed around, Earning the house, the the family, and you know, having this competing with Joneses next door, yep. then yeah, what she's saying um, would be basically predominantly true. Mm. But I don't really deal in that that side of things. So yeah, so I can understand. I don't think she's trying to mislead people. I think it's just a matter of uh, looking looking in one area where there's limitations, where the inner realm is unlimited. Yeah. The deeper that is, it, it directly reflects the outer world. So, but the outer world reveals what's going on inside yourself. And by that, I mean if one is suffering or they're feeling fear or not worthy, then that's like outside or they're dependent outside, keep going back to, then they feel like that dependency, that external stimuli is what is necessary for internal development and peace and harmony, happiness. To enhance the external, you can't get more external. You can't get more material things. You have to focus on the internal. Mm-hmm. So internal development is the only thing that will enhance and develop the external. That's amazing, though. Everyone does the opposite. So many people do the opposite thing. They focus so much on the external, thinking that will yep. bring them something internally, and it it cannot. Only, and this is the, the entrapment of what she was saying is that. People focus way too much, think it's going to reflect the internal, and they, they get caught on in the wrong areas, ultimately. And with that, it's it can give the sense that uh, you're on your own, and that uh, every man for himself. And the the trouble is with this that sort of attitude, you you focus more on the external, you know, yeah. you're materialistic. You, you might work harder, you might you know, get a get another loan, get it yourself, you know, put yourself under more pressure. Because you can't rely on other people, I think when you you stop blaming them for how we're feeling, you can rely on them and depend on them far more than you ever could. Yeah. But when you start seeing the inner you, those people that you resonated with before, they will change. Mm-hmm. So there's certain people. If someone's focused on the external, then not that they can't be in touch with their heart and they can't be genuine and, and they can't assist and help. There's some you know, wealthy people that, that do a lot of good. But mm-hmm. it reflects. Your friends reflect how you think and feel. And that's key. Learn to become 100% responsible for your thoughts, feelings, actions. Mm-hmm. Give without any expectation. So give when you can. I remember when I was in India, I discovered like a that like I'd, I'd donate to my guru at the time and I wouldn't show it was from me. I didn't put my name on it. I donate money. And I, I, the reason I did that is because I felt it was 
squashing the ego. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they couldn't claim onto it. So, yeah. so I was going through at that time. I was thinking, okay, let's. And you no, know, I had teachers at times where some at times I think, yeah, I know what they're saying, and and sometimes to be quiet, it just it's like okay, just be humble and sit there. Even mm-hmm. if you know some of the things, I can offer some things sometimes to what they're saying. You know, they're talking the way they could to try and assist everyone, not to say that they didn't need it or didn't even need input from me anyway. But there, there's things you can do to become more humble, mm-hmm. humility. So yeah, it, it's the non-attachment as well. To I, I feel or to giving. So if you can give without any attachment or expectation and that sits with you, then you've gone to a new level and you're, you've transcended a lot of people because a lot of people do have conditions on it. Yep. And then oh, if people have conditions in the past, if people have had conditions on offering me things, I go, no, it doesn't feel right because I feel there's a, a condition that they haven't even expressed to me but i get a sense of it it's like a cloudiness and i went no, no thanks i don't need that i don't want that mm. so so i feel it's important to trust your intuition don't just take handouts or take things from people if it doesn't feel right it doesn't sit with you That's right. then they, they may project well you or if you do you wear the risk they may project if something doesn't sit with you it's for a reason yep and if, if you take something from someone anyway hoping that what you feel and that gut feeling you feel within doesn't come into fruition, then they're running a gauntlet there. And mm-hmm. it might be okay for a while as long as you're doing what they think want you to do or living how you want them to live. Yep. But as soon as you go off on your own tangent and living, you start doing what's true to you. If it doesn't resonate with them, there's a risk there. Mm-hmm. And you know, gratitude then goes out the window and then you become damaged. You've gone back a number of steps. So I definitely recommend it. Sorry. I definitely recommend if someone offers you something, trust your gut. And yep. if you offer something, if you if it's for a reason or let's say it's for intuition or for, for them to study or for food or for this or for that, they might feel may not feel like they need those things or that's important on their list. So to alleviate any issues there, I'd, I'd make sure I express, say, look, do you need money for this? They'll say yes or no. If they say no, then don't give it to them. If they say yes, then that, and if they don't spend it on that, then go, okay, well, they don't really know what that need. I'm not going to offer anything in future, or yeah. you know, at least say, well, I'll, I'll offer something if if I'm, if it sits with me. But it's it's all the expectation around giving that um, that where it gets murky, and that's when it reacts to people's thoughts and feelings and inhibitions and ideas and projections and all those things. Yeah. I, I remember uh, when I was running my business. Like still fixing, and I went into a meeting, and I, the business was growing pretty quick. You know that a lot of clients would that offer you know, for us to submit a price, and I remember going coming out of one meeting because I, I really wanted this this job. I was we were doing well. I wanted a lot of jobs, and I and I walked out feeling oh, I don't feel comfortable. Like I, I felt a bit needy. I, I was like I, I just didn't didn't sit with me. I felt like I was putting, it was like a murkiness, a neediness mm. in the, after the meeting. And that I felt within myself, I went, ah, that feels yucky. I don't want to be like that. Yeah. Like I, I thought I, I'd rather get it like uh, by being true to myself rather than and trying to negotiate or, or convince them that, that I should do the job. It's like, if I, if they resonate with me and I resonate with them we do, and we do a job together, it's going to be going to be rewarding. And mm-hmm. we'll, we have an understanding. We agree. Yeah. But if the, the water's muddied and we don't necessarily get, agree or there's positioning or we, we clash, we, we don't see eye to eye or we have different ideas, different views, mm-hmm. that job, you have to wonder if it's going, even going to be worth it. So yeah. my attitude changed from that moment. I only remember having that feeling once and I realized after that when I was trying to push you know, the sales or you know offer the services. Well, I was trying to push the sale at that time. I went, no, I'm not doing that in the future. I'd rather do work that we can understand each other, uh, yep. where it resonates. They feel free to choose. They're not pressured in any way. And yep. so, therefore, I'm selling value in the business. And we grew far quicker then because there was none of that neediness. And I felt really comfortable with comfortable within myself. And I yep. feel that made all the difference. Yep. So, there's a lot of things to talk about with gratitude, but it's the person offering, it's the 
person receiving and the expectations and ideas yeah. that goes with that, which is could be any number of things. Mm-hmm. But uh, on a deep level, trust your gut and learn to give without any expectation. And don't feel guilty because you feel you have to or you don't feel guilted or guilty, and that's why you give. Give because it resonates with you and it feels right from everything that you can assess within yourself and resonate with. If it doesn't, then, then don't. Like if, if someone asked me ages ago, I said, oh, you know, someone asked for a cigarette and I, I gave them a cigarette, do you think that was the right thing to do? I said, well, it's up to you really. I said, but have you benefited them? Mm. You know, like you've got a cigarette. So maybe, you know, if, if you smoke and you resonate with that, then you can if you want to. But I'm not going to offer someone to say, I don't smoke anyway. No. But I'm not going to give someone money for, for a pack of cigarettes or anything like that. I'd mm. rather say I'll buy some food yeah. because people can go without eating and buy cigarettes or so, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, just if you're going to offer something, make sure that you know, if you want it for a particular reason, Buy the things they're giving money if you really want to help someone. But uh, in the receiving end, just always go with your gut and don't feel you have to take anything, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you might feel you have to, but I, I would just at the very least and see if there's any conditions or or you make sure you resonate with the person and there's nothing, uh, no surprises, that's all, on either side. The safest yeah. way to give and to discover yourself, learn to trust, trust your gut and surrender wherever you can. Well, I think with uh, taking it depends. Like it can be um, you feel like you when you take it, you may feel like you deserve it or your things aren't fair, so you're taking, you know, and if yeah. you're giving, it might be it, it maybe nothing. You know, it might, might, might be to make you feel good about yourself. It might be as a positioning or it could be, it depends on what you resonate with. Like it's, I've never yeah. really given to take positioning over someone. No. I mean, and when I, when, I, when I had money and I was um, doing well, like I never tracked, like I, I'd take people to lunch or, mm. or so I never ever counted how many times or they never had to pay when I was doing well financially. Yeah, no, me neither. So I never tracked it. Like it. I never penny pinched at all. Uh, me neither. And I've always said that because someone, uh, I was just talking to someone the other day, and they're saying, oh, we should write this down and write that down. And I'm like, I said to her, look, I don't, it doesn't bother me that sometimes it might be me putting more in or you putting more in. It, to me, there will be a natural balance anyway, um, unless someone obviously is pushing to take advantage. But, but you uh, know those friends. Like, you know, yeah. like a, the, your friends in general, no one's going to just try and, you know. No. Just, and, and, and that's what I felt, yeah. yeah. Exactly, because yeah. I think both of us, it's a relationship where both of us sort of respect each other enough not to to do that. And I said, you know, goes around, comes around. I'm not really fussed. Yeah. One yeah. day it might be me putting in a little bit more. One day it might be her putting in a bit more and it doesn't worry me. I just feel if your friends tend to put their hands in their pockets and don't pay at all, mm. you've either got to look at your friends or look at the, the reason or why you're paying. Like, are you doing that for approval? Are you doing it to for positioning on some level? Like, you've got is it something to reevaluate there anyway? Yeah. yeah. So, if one of my friends always pay, mm. I've got to look at okay, is there other things that I do? You know, yeah. is that what do I give them that that because sometimes they might pay where I can offer something else or yeah. you know for a service or something like that. Mm-hmm. But so there's a a exchange. Yeah. Like there's no exchange. Then you've got to look at why, and you're paying. You've got to look at why you're paying for. What yeah. you could get? Someone should offer something. Yeah. On some level, otherwise, if you're just paying and then offering nothing, then obviously different if it's a child or if it's someone else. But if it's someone that's similar to yourself, and then they've put their hand in the pocket and they never offer anything, you, you need to have a look at obviously what you're doing and why you're doing it. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. Everyone wants to be valued. Everyone wants to be valued for sure. So yeah. and respect. Yeah, if something doesn't sit, I really feel if something doesn't sit with you, well, there's no way through. It doesn't mean that there is no way through. It just means that uh, the other person might be focusing or justifying a certain result. But 
anything's possible and there's always a way through, always, no matter what, whether you feel it or not. You know, we've all been through suffering and we've all felt pressure and felt like there's no way through at times. There always is. There always is. So never give up seeking. Thanks for listening in to another Fireside Chat. Feel free to comment, share, like, subscribe, and we look forward to the next one. Bye for now.